Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu has indeed talked to President Biden. Uh, don't know what came of those discussions. We do know the president is getting an intelligence briefing. Already had one earlier this morning. The latest from the White House right now. Lucas Tomlinson is there. Lucas. You mentioned, Neil, this uh, Hamas attack on Israel uh, launched uh, 50 years to the day after, uh, one day after the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, a war that also took Israel by surprise. You mentioned uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu speaking to President Biden this morning, who's at the White House, is receiving regular updates, as you mentioned. Uh, the president's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, has also spoken to Israeli counterpart and uh, the National Security Council spokeswoman issuing a statement following that call, reading quote, the United States unequivocally condemns the unprovoked attack by Hamas terrorists against Israeli civilians. There is never any justification for terrorism. We stand firmly with the government and people of Israel and extend our condolences for the Israeli lives lost in these attacks. And you mentioned earlier, Neil, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin pledging the full support of the U.S. military, uh, saying in part, quote, over the coming days, the Department of Defense will work to ensure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself and protect civilians from indiscriminate violence and terrorism. Uh, we're also receiving word that uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has also issued a statement condemning today's attacks. There was also this tweet that has now been deleted by the U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs saying in part, quote, we urge all sides to refrain from violence and retaliatory attacks. Terror and violence solve nothing. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz condemning the tweet saying, quote, in response, this is disgraceful and every single person involved in drafting and approving this tweet should be immediately expelled from the U.S. government. And, Neil, some lawmakers say are questioning the decision by the Biden administration to send Iran $6 billion in, in that prisoner swap recently to free the American hostages in Iran. It was a, about a five-for-five five swap. There's also some evidence that the war in Ukraine is having an impact. There's some uh, video circulating on, circulating on social media, Neil, showing an Israeli tank being destroyed by a Hamas drone. It looks very similar to what we're used to seeing on the battlefield in Ukraine, a grenade being dropped from the drone hitting the uh, turret, the softer part of the tank, and it being blown up just to show you uh, uh, Hamas and, and uh, Iran learning uh, from the battlefield in Ukraine as it applies to this war now. You know, Lucas, to that point and the surprise nature of all of this, we're now learning the Israeli military says that its Navy forces have killed dozens of Palestinian militants trying to infiltrate Israel by sea. Of course, this comes about 20 minutes after getting a report from the Palestinian health minister in Gaza that says 198 had been killed, more than 1,600 wounded in the territory in a quick retaliation by the Israelis. So obviously this is escalating as we speak. But again, the rapid nature of this and whether uh, we're hearing from any other countries in the, the, the Arab world about this and how the administration is weighing that. Well, first, the uh, Biden administration is going to be leaning on its Western allies. Neil, we've seen uh, everyone from Great Britain uh, to the European Union to countries uh, in Europe condemning today's uh, surprise attack by Hamas in Israel. And you mentioned uh, those elite units of the Israeli Defense Forces that are going to be called upon uh, to rescue these Israeli hostages. You've got a Syed Mitkal, which is uh, an elite commando unit similar to the U.S. Army's Delta Force. Uh, there's no question that those elite units will be counted on uh, to take some uh, daring raids inside Gaza, uh, which, as we heard earlier from Pete Hexos, is no doubt a hornet's nest right now, Neil. You know, we always look, and you're a great student of history, Lucas, at the significance of a day or a day, this one, the day after the 50th anniversary of that Yom Kippur war that, that right. spread and launched the Arab oil embargo, famously. But beyond that, this is the day that Anwar Sadat, the Egyptian president, was assassinated. And I, I wonder whether... Th these dates bear significance for those who perpetrate attacks on them. There's no question, Neil. When you look at the history of terrorism, many times uh, they are conducted on significant anniversaries. For example, you know, there's no question the 9-11 attacks on the United States, uh, the, the numbers 9-1-1 was part of that, and uh, just anniversaries in general. We saw the attacks on Benghazi launched uh, a few years, at, years after 9-11 attacks. There's no doubt uh, the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, a, a war that also took Israel by surprise, Neil. Uh, there's no question uh, these days are significant, and not just for the people in Israel, of course, but also to these terrorist groups. You know, Lucas, I'm, I'm belaboring this, but I enjoy having you on, and I learn a lot. I, you know, much has been said about the dome that Israel has to prevent missile and other attacks. This is obviously a different case where you can go under the dome and do a great deal of damage. 
furthermore, well-coordinated attacks, but a clear breakdown in Israeli and I don't know who else's intelligence. That has got to be a concern uh, among the folks behind you. There's no question, Neil. And this morning, some officials are, are saying that, you know, when you look at AI or technology, and sometimes there's a, a, you know, a thought of maybe relying too much on technology, uh, you know, Armies still need to have a sentry posted along these walls. Uh, that is still what many officials will say is the best sensor. Uh, you have to think, if this, would this surprise attack have happened if perhaps there were not more soldiers deployed? Although, as we heard from Trey's reporting, this is attacks happening on a, a high Israeli holiday uh, on Shabbat and, and on a holiday in, in the country. And, you know, but, but does the technology, whether it's AI or drones or other kinds of, of modern technology, ever replace uh, that sentry, that soldier? standing the watch along a wall, uh, and perhaps uh, that, that could have changed things. But there, there, there's no question uh, this was an intelligence failure today. Most officials uh, in and out of Israel would say this, and there's no question that uh, this is the largest attack on Israel in a half century. And uh, Israelis will never forget this day in history. All right. Um, Lucas, thank you. Uh, we'll be going back to you, my friend, for updates. Uh, if and when they become available. Lucas Tomlinson at the White House. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.